Would you like to learn the secrets to easily pass the CISSP exam? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm a cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect with about 25 years experience. And today's video, we're gonna talk about the CISSP. The CISSP is one of the absolute best uh, security certifications. It's one of my favorites because when I train people in this, uh, after they have the CISSP, they seem to get a lot more interviews. And I've always used the CISSP as my foundation for good, strong fundamentals. So I absolutely love this certification. The CISSP is good for your professional brand and it does make your resume stand out. But a lot of people have trouble with the CISSP exam. They go, they get to take the exam, they see these questions and they say, what are they crazy? Well, they're not crazy. And that's why we're gonna talk about the secrets to winning this exam. So when I first took the CISSP exam, I looked at these questions and I said, I had an, and I was a little worried about the exam, but I had an aha moment after the first question. And it said, you know, Mike, you've seen these exams for years. And here's the reason why the CISSP is very much like a medical exam. And I had been a medical professional. I was a nurse practitioner practicing internal medicine. So when I saw this, I went, ah, I already learned how to pass this kind of question. So let's talk about the kind of questions in the CISSP exam. What I mean by more like a medical or an architecture exam, then we're gonna talk about the ways to think about how to answering these questions. And of course, I'll talk about the domains in the exam because I wanna make sure you pass the CISSP certification. So when you get a medical question, or you get a CISSP question, they're really checking your professional judgment and your knowledge of the overall system. So if you, a medical professional will get a question where they'll get a cluster of information. And of the cluster of information, there may be three or four possibilities where one possibility is the best of the other possibilities. And that's typically the right answer. This is very much like an architecture exam where you'll get a lot of information and then you'll have to make a sound architectural judgment after considering the entire system and impact of one change in the system to another part of the system, the people in the system, the security in the system, the strengths in the system, the weakness in the system, the attack points in the system, point, and look at everything and then make a decision. So if you think about that and always think from an architecture perspective, which I'll talk a lot more about that, than an engineering perspective, you'll be great. If you approach this with an engineering mindset, and I'm gonna show you what an engineering question is, which we need our engineers to be good at, you will struggle terribly on this exam. An engineering question might be, you have, uh, you're have you being attacked by an IP address and they give you the IP address, and then they say, what would you like to do about it? And you'll have an option like add the, a firewall where to block that IP address, and it'll be a very simple, straightforward answer. That's not an architecture exam. That's nothing like you'd see in the CISSP. So because the CISSP is an architecture exam, it's more about you understanding the entire system, the impact of a single change in the system to other parts of that system, understanding that there is no perfect solution ever. So you're gonna have many possible things that you can do and you're gonna to have to choose which is the best for the organization's need after evaluating all trade-offs. You'll have to, in medicine and in architecture, make decisions with partial information because in most cases, you're gonna to try to do something that's never been done before and there may not be information. So you'll have partial information, some great best practices, but the solution is gonna require a lot of reasoning judgment and thought. So that's what they're testing on the CISSP exam. So keep your mind in the perspective of security architect, which is a half business, half tech person, CISO, which is predominantly a business person, cloud security architect, and you'll be good. So let's uh, talk about how to do this. I'll give you some initial high level steps and then we're gonna get more specific. The first thing I want you to do is when you see a question to take a step back, think about the entire system, What's going on in the big picture? Think about that system and anything on it, its strengths, its weaknesses. Think about opportunities that it could be hacked. Think about the risk, think about the people, think about the IT processes, think it about all of it, not what's directly in the question. Because again, this is an architecture exam, not an engineering exam. 
So let's think about it. So one of the things you're going to have to do a lot of is evaluate security trade-offs. You will have to weigh performance, cost, usability, and risk when selecting controls. Because that's exactly what you would be doing either in a security architect role or a cloud security architect role or the CISSP exam. You won't be configuring things as an architect, so there's nothing going to be more in that how-to, that deep engineering level. It's always going to be more business, more architect. So think about business alignment and risk management in your answers. Many questions on the CISSP exam are going to involve uh, aligning security with business goals, compliance, legal needs, legal requirements, that kind of thing. So think about that in any answer or response you might provide. Now, Think about the context of the question with regards to policy, governance, and frameworks. And it's going to be absolutely critical to understand what goes into design of secure systems and, side of, and, and managing those secure systems against business constraints. So think about it from a security architect perspective. So they're going to give you uh, decision-making under pressure because you don't have a lot of time. Now, unfortunately, as an architect, you're going to have to make those decisions sometimes too. So think about what is the best solution of the options provided. Now, the best solution will always balance cost, security, business impact, business alignments, because if the security destroys the business, it's no good. If the security costs more than the asset's worth, it's no good. So it's going to always be about a balance and a thought and a thing to do. Now think about security architecture across domains. If there's an answer that only uses IAM as security architecture, it is completely wrong. If it only uses network security as a rule, when they're talking about security architecture, it is wrong, unless they're talking about something focused in that area. So realize that anything security-wise is gonna take IAM, it's gonna take network security, application security, incident response, physical security, risk management planning, and all the other elements that go into it. Now, part of this exam, because it's an architecture exam, is going to be life cycle of systems and data. So a security architect and all like the CISO are all going to be focused on what are the assets values, what's the life cycle of the asset, how do they protect it. But also there's going to be a time where we take in new systems and then we, we contract with others and we start using systems. And then there's a point where they're no longer worth for us, work for us, and we have to break off the relationships with the vendor and to do it in an elegant and a legal and appropriate manner. So there's a lot that's going to go into that, and you may see that us on this exam. Now, you will have to consider risk tolerance and cost benefit of the risk. So that's about asset valuation and determining the risk to that asset. So make sure you know how to do those numbers that they talk about. Uh, as far as calculating risk, because you have to be able to manage risk. And from a security architect perspective, how do I sell a $50 million security solution to an enterprise if they don't even know what the risk is? If they know they've got $300 million of risk, $50 million of risk management makes sense. But they have to know what that is. Now, in any of these questions, because it's an architecture exam, assume there's going to be a component of communication skills or the ability to influence others or stakeholder management, because that's going to be tied to anything in the architecture world. So you might have to think about how risk would be explained to executives or how leading an incident response team might require strategic thinking, not just the technical stuff. So a lot of questions on risk management and cost benefit analysis, but you know, when you think about it, the right answer is gonna be the thing that's best for the business. So. If you see things that only involve technical control, controls, especially if they don't align with business needs, they're going to be the wrong choice. So I kind of hope that gives you some guidance. Now, what are the main domains of the CISSP exam? Well, security and risk management. So that's going to be, think about a lot of policies, governance, compliance, ethics, that kind of thing. Asset security. So that is, you know, determining what the asset is and what the asset, asset's worth, for example, and how you would protect that and understand what all those assets actually are. Now there's a component called security architecture and engineering. There's no engineering in this exam, it's purely architecture. So we'll talk about secure design principles, cryptography, system security, those types of things. Now there will be a lot that they call communication security, which mostly is network security, not all, but mostly uh, things like IPsec, things like TLS encryption, firewalls, VPNs predominantly. So that's predominantly networking security, as well as uh, encrypting your data, which is typically done on the network anyway. 
Identity and access management, yeah, that's becoming, I mean, it was always important, but it's becoming more and more critical as we have weaker, weaker boundaries in the cloud computing than we did in the data center. So that kind of mandates much stronger IAM systems and zero trust. So you'll see a lot of that there. There's a lot of questions that I remember on security assessment and testing and uh, coming from an architect background, you know, they were well covered in uh, the CISP books that were actually written out there, the official textbooks. So I would suggest reading that, especially if you don't have that. But again, they're going to be business related. What's going to make sense for the business from an audit assessment security control perspective? So think about that. Lots on security operations, monitoring, incident response, disaster recovery, uh, business continuity planning, lots of great stuff on that in there, which is, of course, a key role of the security architect. And there's a large component on software development security and secure software development and software development life cycles and vulnerabilities and coding practices. So that's the main element of the exam. But if you think and remember, there's never a best, a best situation. Everything is an evaluation of trade-offs. Think about the big picture. Think about one change and its impact to the entire system. Don't just think about what's in front of you. Really think about everything and the impact of the changes on the business. If you can keep that in your mind, you're typically going to be great on the CISSP exam. If you'd like to become a security architect or a cloud architect or an AI architect or an enterprise architect or a network architect, we have a weekly webinar which we call How to Become a Cloud Architect. Now in the Cloud Architect webinar, we'll talk about what we do as cloud architects, but I'll also answer questions about if you desire AI architects, enterprise architects, security architects, as well as talk to you about the interplay of the architects. So we'll go over what we do in various architectural roles. We'll talk about uh, what you need to be hired and what you need to do to be hired when you you don't have experience and then we'll answer questions that you have for about an hour so you can sign up for that free architecture webinar the link is in the description of this video it's completely free it's live on zoom i'd love to meet you and have a conversation with you and see what i can do to help you in your architecture career if you've enjoyed this video please give it a like subscribe and uh, maybe hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your security architecture career cloud architecture career, or any other architecture career that you desire and uh, I hope to see you in another video or a free webinar where I can meet you uh, pseudo in person on Zoom. Uh, it was nice to see you and I'll see you in another video. Take care.